Previously on Junkyard Digs. From what we understand, this has sat for about 10 years. It looks like we have a 70s Bronco frame and a Cadillac Seville body. I think that's a 460 Ford. Yep, that's Spark. Oh. Dude, like it was Spark yesterday. But there's a little fluid left in the rears. Try it now, Jesse. Do you feel anything? Slowly. Good luck in there. Oh, ah, I found a jumping spider! Oh, it's pinging like a son of a gun. Not happy with this edible rock. It's pretty bad. Maybe we're gonna be putting a holly on after all. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> There's been an oops. We had a small crack. Thank you to Nate and Dave here in Sheboygan for hooking us up. All right, let's see how much life this old 750's got left in her. Always check your flow height when you put a new carburetor on. this son bitch on the trailer and get out of here. There it is. That right there is the SS Badger. Me and Greta, my dog work. Here, let me get a picture with you. Absolutely. Got you, brother. Got you. <laughs> the gate guard recognized us. For what's in that. I love your freaking show, man. Love Thank it. you very much. <laughs> This you guys is, have a great one. This Thank is you. next week's episode. You got it, man. We're awesome. heading, hoping to head to the sand dunes. <laughs> Today you join us right where we left off for part two of the Battle Axe series in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. More specifically at the port of the SS Badger, the last coal-fired passenger ship still in operation in the United States. With our sights set on Silver Lake sand dunes straight across Lake Michigan, we climbed aboard and watched as the crew gently loaded the truck and trailer onto the boat. Are your stickers? Hey, I think I know that guy. <laughs> Once everything was loaded up, the crew fired up 7,000 horsepower worth of steam engines, and we started the four-hour trip to Ludington, Michigan. Goodbye, Wisconsin. Your roads have been terrible. Hopefully your lake is a lot smoother. I, I imagine it is. It's probably not even close. Being 410 foot long, the Badger had a lot of room for amenities and activities. There was a full cafeteria, a gift shop, a movie theater, a kids area, a bar with a limit of two Long Islands per person, and a ton of open deck space for you to look out over the lake. And if you look to the left here, you have a large stack of smoke or something, I don't know. If you look to the right, you have whatever lake we're on. You're on? Yes. Michelin. Michelob. Michelob. Wait, Michelob. Michelob. Lake Long Island iced teas. It's a little windy, but right here, we have one of those anti-deer whistles. It seems to be working. There's no deer. There's no deer. As the Badger steamed on towards Michigan, many of the guests enjoyed a game of bingo in the main cafeteria. We motorheads, however, were more focused on finding out more about the propulsion system, so we decided to start looking for clues. All right, so there's a few definite vibrations we feel. We've been theorizing what they are. We've been going around and they've got all sorts of this stuff around the boat for you motorheads that are aboard. Uh, this is the uh, Skinner Compound Uniflow Marine Steam Engine, whatever that means. It's got two pistons, a high and a low pressure. Uh, some typical two-stroke porting up here and valving on the top with dual camshafts and a piston rod that then connects to a crankshaft and a dry sump system and it makes, what they say, 3,500 horsepower. Oh, I didn't, I literally never saw this one. <laughs> well, how's the, so they are direct drive. Interesting. Oh, they definitely have a T5 on each engine. <laughs> Eventually, we found a video in the museum, or napping room, that answered all of our questions. And next thing we knew, there were sand dunes on the horizon. In no time at all, the crew had the truck and trailer unloaded, and it was time to hit the road once again. Honestly, that was probably the most seamless transition to Michigan I've ever experienced. 
We hit up a local pizza joint in Hart, Michigan for supper, and while Jesse demonstrated his drawing skills, I decided it was time for me to go on a mission to interrogate some locals and figure out exactly what the hell we've gotten ourselves into. None of us had ever gone to the dunes before, and I am not one to be unprepared. After striking out at the pizza joint, I thought I'd try the local bar, which is where I met Chris. Chris had lived near the dunes his whole life, so he had all the answers to my questions. A big thanks to him and the rest of the staff down at Christie's Poorhouse for the beers and, of course, getting us set straight for the day ahead. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's a big sand pile. What have we got ourselves into? Good morning, and welcome to Hart, Michigan. Last night, I swung by one of the local bars and got some info, as you saw. And uh, it turns out we're here on the week of Jeep Invasion, which means there was a shitload of Jeeps here all week, and I think there still are. So, should be plenty of people out there on the dunes to uh, help us out when we inevitably get stuck 15 times. Uh, we got a couple things to do to the car this morning. We need to let all the air out of the tires, most of it. We need to get a flag set up. Let's get to it. <laughs> They won't turn off. Turn off. No. Oh, damn it. Okay. All right. Our tires are aired down. All of our extra crap is out of the car. Let's drive this over to inspection and see if they accept our uh, Bell bicycle flag that we got at True Value. I'm gonna make a guess and say no. <laughs> Personally, I was a big fan of the Bell bicycle flag, but I guess that's a big no-no. Alright, let's try this again before the rain hits. I can't get the damn wipers to turn off. Thank you. I guess we're in. It immediately starts off rough. <laughs> we just lock in the floor now. Okay, good. There's a bigger truck than us. Always have a bigger truck. <laughs> Big bumpies. Oh! Okay, this must be Test Hill up here. Oh, oh my god. god. That's Test Hill. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, 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 so no. this. Okay, so that's Test Hill, which is where this all starts. So how do we how do we film this? Do you stay back here and hitch a ride with someone else? No. You got a better idea? No one had a better idea, so we asked one of the Jeeps at the bottom of the hill if they'd give Jesse a ride up. <laughs> Tell you what, he sure as hell made it. We studied the technique of a couple more vehicles before finally giving it a go ourselves. Ah! Despite still pinging like crazy, if I didn't go above half throttle, the Cadillac had good power. So much so that we do about 30 mile an hour up the dune. Afraid of cresting the top too far and ending up on one of those YouTube crash compilation videos, I kept lifting a little too early to properly clear the hill. Once I got over the fear of staying in too long and flying over the top, and figured out how to run the car so it wouldn't stall, we were good to go. Who did it? We died. Oh, 
Okay, we made it up Test Hill. It was a test. <gasps> Hold on, we. Move. I'm glad we fixed those brakes. They're actually starting to work pretty okay. With Test Hill behind us, it was time to go explore the park and see what else Silver Lake Sand Dunes had to offer. This is a bumpy one. Hold on. Just kept going. Look how pointy that is over there. Oh boy. I just used the first quarter of the throttle. It makes power and runs good. Otherwise, nothing. Wow, that's a view. Look at that. I had no idea what to expect from Silver Lake Sand Dunes, but one thing's for sure it wasn't this, especially in the middle of the US where there's very little off road trails. All right, so we just came down this. And now we're gonna go this way against the arrows, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you read the legend, the yellow is just a trail, which is what Oh, okay, so it's it's multi-directional? Yes. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. This place is huge. $46 to get in for the day as a non-resident. That was like probably one of the best entrance fees I've ever seen for a park that's owned by the DNR. Like that, that was awesome. So let us go utilize all of that $46. Good. I hit my head on the roof and pushed the little thing on my hat into the. Yeah, you got a, a lot closer than I was expecting. <laughs> oh, we actually got air. There's no. Oh yeah, you did. It looked really violent. I was coming up to it. I was like, "Yeah, send it," and then I went. Oh wait, it goes back down. That's gonna be a slapper. After trying out some of the local air, we decided to head for the trails next to the dunes. Oh, what's this? Those are porta potties. Oh, look at a bowl. It's like Michigan. Oh, like a Bronco! Oh, that's awesome. As our confidence in the Cadillac increased, it was becoming clear that there was pretty much nothing that could stop this car out here. Well, except for one thing. Oh, it's the water hole that we were told not to go into because we'll definitely get stuck. Yeah. Got it. I'm not touching it. <laughs> In classic Cadillac fashion, I can't see over the end of the hood. Let's see if this is steep or not. So, uh, good luck, everybody. Oh, it's not that bad. Whee! These little trails are so cool. This would be a blast with a, like a side by side or a four wheeler or a Cadillac Seville. We might need to stop and get that dang defrost working. I can't see a darn thing, I tell you. Okay, so to our right is the drag strip. Let's stop and see if we can get the defrost or the heat the blower motor to work. While I set the work fixing the blower motor, a couple of two-stroke quads battled it out in epic fashion. The Honda by a mile. Well, we got our defrost working, but now we lost our alternator apparently. Oh boy. So this is exactly why I hate electric fans. The motor's getting warm, which is getting our alternator hot, which means it's not charging. Well, to cool the motor, I need to run the fans, and I can't run the fans without the battery, which I don't have when there's no alternator. It's a vicious cycle. It's stupid. I hate them. Run a manual fan. It will oh. never fail you. Our temp is running away. I think we're going to need to pull off and put some water on the alternator or something, try to get that cooled down. Buddy. So 
seeing that our voltage came back up, the water seemed to do the trick. We set the car on top of a hill to cool in the wind a little bit while I went underneath to tighten the alternator belt. Well, things could be worse. Could have a flat tire. One thing I liked about every time we would stop at the dunes was that it was always a show everywhere around you. And there were all sorts of vehicles, from built jeeps to just regular traffic on normal tires. Yeah. See all the sand in the brakes. Oh. After sitting for a while, the Cadillac was cooled off and ready to hit the trails once again. We decided to throw Jesse behind the wheel this time because, hell, we came this far. Why not? All right, Jesse. All right. Gonna show them how it's done. Light it off. All the ignition timing. I don't think that harmonic balancer is reading correctly for what's actually happening. I think nine is actually like twenty. Mm -hmm. Especially since it's idling this smooth with no vacuum advance hooked up. We're down to 180, just like that. Well, it'll it's move. It's coming back up. Yeah, the cold water in the radiator will go yeah. into the engine. Hey! Oh, there we go. Yeah, that cool alternator though. cooled down. You can probably turn your fan on. Yes, it bogged the engine down. The alternator's working again. There we go. Just had to let it cool for a bit. We're pulling All right. again. Give her hell, son. thoughts on the battle act? Big, gurgly, and heavy. <laughs> I think the tires help a lot because it does yeah. have good tires. Here you go. You get a trophy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> After showing some jeeps how it was done on a small line they had been struggling with, we decided to go searching for the steepest hill in the park to see if the battle act could do it. Alternator again, and we were getting warm once again as well. It turns out our last hill climb was just enough to toss the belt. The question is, did I throw it or did it explode? I think it exploded. Probably because exploded. It had like a U shape yeah, around it was, all the pulleys. They're both really bad. Two random belts in the trunk. Let's see what they are. It's new. That's just as old, but it's new. Let's see if these fit. What's the chance I can just. Whoop. Let's tighten the belts again. But thank God there's one in the trunk. We'll be good to go now. With the alternator belt fixed, we're ready to get back on the trails. But first, I saw a hill with a lot of potential. You know what I've always wanted to do? Enough, I bet it works. Despite even Jesse's best efforts, the tacky sand and grippy paint on the bottom of the Cadillac hood 
was just too much friction for us to overcome and successfully slide down the hill. I was really hoping this worked, so I suppose we'll just have to go back someday and try again. Either way, at this point, it was getting pretty late in the afternoon, and we still wanted to drive the nine hours home today. We put the hood back on the Cadillac and decided to attack the big hills one more time before calling it a day. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, ow! Oh. <laughs> I swear, this camera audio only cuts out on the most important clips, one of those being the entirety of the outro. So until it clicks back on at the very end, I'm going to guess what I'm saying, because I have no idea. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have brought the Cadillac to the, nope, hang on, I got to start over, I, I didn't like how I closed the door. Okay, here we go, Freddy, you can do this, Kevin, you can do this, wait for the, wait for the four wheelers to drive by. Bang. There we go. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the Battleac has survived the Silver Lake Sand Dunes. Oh god, there's sand all over my hand. I swear, this stuff is everywhere. It's in my pants, it's in my underwear, it's in my hair. Hell, it's it's in my shoes. It is, I, it's a mess, I'll tell you what. It's this big of a mess. And, yeah, it needs to stop. Where was I? Oh, that's right. Anyway, yeah, the Cadillac. Uh, we brought it all the way here to the Sand Dunes. It did an excellent job, especially for sitting for 20 years before that. Oh, uh, we got it fixed, brought it all the way across the lake, drove it up and down the sand dunes. Uh, yeah, we really had a good time with this whole thing. So uh, thank you to Jesse, thank you to Moog. Thank you to the crew of the SS Badger for getting us all the way across Lake Michigan. And thank you to everyone who was a part of the Silver Lake Sand Dunes so that we could come have an absolute blast here. This was a lot of fun. I definitely want to come back sometime. Maybe not a Cadillac, maybe like a four-wheeler. <laughs> and of course, last but not least, thank you guys for watching this video. Hitting like, subscribing, turning notifications on, and everything down below. We'll see you next week for another episode of Junkyard Digs. Peace. Ah! <laughs> what was that?